Is name Adiwal? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is name Adiwal? Yes, sir. Okay, madam. Shall I put to uh, she? One minute, sir. You muted, sir. Shall I share the screen, madam? Ha, ah, sir. One minute, I'll give. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it? No, I am putting it into full mode, madam. Is it uh, visible? Please have a look, madam. Is it right? Full mode? No, sir. Not coming, madam. No, sir. It's in normal PPT mode. Mm, I have put in the full mode, madam. Uh, can you put, madam? Then I will uh, unshare the things from your side. Uh, okay, sir. Just I'll give introduction. Then yeah. we we'll start. Okay. Good afternoon, one and all. Uh, I think having an animal in your life makes you a better human. Welcome to 84th episode of Creative Online Talks. I am Supriya Nayaka hosting this program. Creative, a group of people who are eager to gain new knowledge. Knowledge Square is our tagline. Sharing of knowledge increases our knowledge. Vision of Creative is to, be, is to build a constructive thinking on various domains. Our main focus on non-textual, non non-academic, non-syllabus related concepts. Creative is a platform to the resource persons to share their knowledge. I thank all our resource persons for engaging us with their knowledge. Every Saturday at 3 p.m., we organize online talks on Zoom platform and we live stream our program on our YouTube channel, Creative GBD. For more updates, you can join our WhatsApp group or you can follow our social medias. Today's creative topic is on pet schooling and guidance for welfare. As we all know, pet have been an important part of human society for thousands of years, providing companionship, protection, and even helping us with work and transportation. Whether it's a loyal dog, a playful cat, and a colorful bird. Pet brings joy, comfort, and many other benefits to our lives. But pet ownership is not just about having a cute furry friend. It's also a responsibility that requires time, effort, and resources. We need to understand their need, behavior, communication, and provide them with a proper environment, training, and socialization they require. To know more insights, we have Dr. Hemant Gowda Kesar with us today. I welcome you, sir, and I welcome all creative participants for today's session. I call Divya, creative volunteer, to introduce today's speaker. Over to Divya. Thank you, ma'am. Good afternoon, one and all present here. I am Divya, volunteer of creative. I am here to introduce our today's guest, Dr. Hemant Gowda, sir. He is assistant professor in veterinary physiology and biochemistry from Veterinary College, Karnataka Veterinary Animal Fisheries Science University from Bidar, Asan, Karnataka. He has completed his BVSC and Animal Husbandry, MVSC, PhD, MVS, MSc Technology, Environmental Science and Technology, PGDAEM in Agriculture Extension and Management and PGCVH Veterinary Homeopathy and PGDCE in communication, Communicative English and PGDET in Education Technology. And his scholarships and awards were Inspire Fellowship from Department of Science and Technology, Government of India and Best Clinical Case Presentation Award from Tamil Nadu Veterinary and Animal Sciences University and First Prize in Biotechnology Entrepreneur Student Team, Department of Biotechnology from Government of India. And Best Oral Presentation Award, PEBHT Tirupati, India. And he got Young Scientist Award, Swadeshi Kannada Vignana Sammedana, Mysuru. And he got first place, Kapila Fest, Kottayam, Kerala. And Visiting Fellowship from JNCASR and Fellow Academy of Sciences, for animal welfare and reviewer for International Journal of Livestock Research from 2017. And his works are, he has 18 
research articles and 25 technical bulletins and eight radio talks and 12 seminar organized funded from KMF and ICAR and etc. And he has 20 research articles for training manuals. And he wrote one book and he completed 12 research products funded from ICAR, Coconut Board, Department of Biotechnology, Ministry of Science and Technology from Government of India and etc. And he is presently working on two ongoing projects. He, this is all about our guest. I am welcoming our guest, Heyman sir, to our 84th Creative Talk. And I am welcoming all the participants of Creative and Supriya ma'am. And thank you, Supriya ma'am, for giving me such an opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Divya. Over to you, sir, Heyman sir. Yeah, ma'am, uh, can you share, put the slides for sharing, madam? One minute, sir. Because from my end, uh, full mode is not uh, being taken up. That's why. So, so far, uh, overall in this platform, uh, are you people, any of you are having any pet in your uh, dog, especially the, in your home, that especially dog or cat, something like that, or any fishes? Is there anyone with the pet in the house? Please respond. I have Is... unmuted them. One minute. Muted them. Allah. Unmute. Sir, uh, it's visible, sir? Uh, visible, madam. Visible. Now it's in. Uh, this, uh, sir, now, uh, sir, it's a full screen. Uh, I think it is okay, ma'am. Full screen only. Can I upload from this end? No, ma'am. No. no, 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 sir. Uh, uh, for the next slide, uh, I will keep on telling that uh, next slide. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, please. Is anyone who is uh, having a pet in their house? One minute, on sir. Platform? We have to unmute them. Uh, if, please, uh, please. One minute. Since only for a few are there, uh, we can have a chat with them also and interact to be in that. Mm. Or at least they can uh, chat also. One minute. Just... You can uh, unmute and talk with Sir. Uh, yes, please. Anyone please with the pet in the home? Please respond. Deepika, Argiri, Sharakil, Priya, Divya, Ragnath, anyone? Hello. Sir, so, audible or not, ma'am? Audible, sir. Yes, rabbit is there with Akil. So, from how long you are having uh, the rabbit in your house? Please start. You can talk, you can unmute and uh, you can talk with me. Oh, dog is also there with someone, especially with Divya. Most of the people are having uh, the things with them. It's, yes, very nice. Uh, we shall go that today about uh, what is this schooling, especially. Uh, this schooling means what we are talking is about the breeding aspects. Means uh, at what age uh, we have to make uh, any of our pet. And in reference to dog and cat, I especially speak with those uh, uh, animals as an uh, uh, landmark, uh, keeping apart all other pets. So schooling literally means, means the uh, breeding aspects uh, and at what age we should uh, make them to breed if we want uh, the young one from our pets. Or at what age we can make them uh, neuter, means operate them so that they go, shouldn't go for any of the uh, breeding activities. That's the meaning of the schooling. And then guidance means it is about the managemental aspects uh, concerning from uh, uh, start of the birth to the end of the animal, like uh, uh, how much uh, feeding should be done, at what age, uh, uh, how many times the feeding should be done, and what should be the concentrations, means uh, uh, protein content or carbohydrate content. Then what should be the walking uh, hours, means uh, exercise uh, timing, what should be then, then how should be the bed for them. And uh, like these aspects, uh, we will uh, come across uh, the guidance or the managemental aspects. Why we need to have both these, that uh, uh, schooling, the breeding aspects, uh, information or the, and the guidance about the animal thing is to have a very good welfare for the animals. Because why we are keeping the pet with us is to 
you know, uh, pleasure with them means especially the pet animals are the one which makes us happy. In comparison or in comparative to the domestic animals, the pet are the one which are kept inside us or inside our animal, wherein we are getting some of the pleasure or the psychological uh, relief wherein uh, we are getting from these pet animals. So thereby we have to make sure that our pets are in good welfare conditions in terms of the food or in terms of the weather or in terms of the surrounding environment, free from diseases or any illness or any nutritional deficiencies, such that they are in the very good healthy conditions and thereby we are mutually benefited. So in that aspect, what we are all talking about is the uh, guidance for the welfare of the animals. Next, please, ma'am. So the... Hello. Uh, though those are the animals which are kept as a companion and for uh, indoor purpose are the one which are uh, usually the pet animals. So they provide the enjoyment and then the psychological relief for all of us. And uh, they are also the tamed animals. Means some latest uh, trend is that to keep uh, some of the uh, people are keeping the snakes are also as a pet, but it is not so in our uh, Indian conditions. Uh, so in that way, the pet are also the tamed animals and they are the one which are the chosen to live with a person without any uh, conflict between us. Means pet are the one which are uh, in very good company with us and the, any of the other animals. So they are uh, known for their loyalty and playful characters and the attractive appearances and the songs are the uh, vocalizations what they will make will definitely make us the uh, very good uh, environment and uh, appease us and the ambience will be good. With that, we are keeping the pet animals with us. So next please. Uh, so in that way, uh, as opposed to the livestock or the farm animals or the laboratory animals or the zoo animals, or the sport or working animals, wherein we are keeping such of those for the economic purpose. For example, cattle, being in a farm animal, we keep them for the milk purpose, whereas sheep and goat or chicken, we keep them for the meat purpose. And some uh, horses or uh, donkeys or bulls, where we keep them for the, some that, that. we keep them for the uh, um, uh, economic purpose itself. That please, madam. Previous slide, please. So, Pets are the one which are uh, not of for these uh, economical reasons. So definitely, it is the pet animals we are in. We are keeping them for the unconditional love and the ambience improvement, and thereby uh, to little bit extent, the pet animals also serves as uh, security for our houses. So in preference to that is the dog, especially. Please. So in the next slide, what we are comparing is in between the uh, pet animals and the farm animals. So pets are kept as friends. Pets frequently stay within the house with their owners. They are guarding them against the uh, outsiders. Whereas the domestic animals are the ones which are for the economical or financial benefits. Households uh, hardly will have uh, the domestic animals inside. But in contrary to this, in the present days, that too in the metropolitan cities, uh, some of the dwarf breeds of cattle, especially these mallard get uh, mature like this, the, because these are the uh, shortest uh, cattle breeds, and wherein they are uh, very rich, uh, elite people in the uh, urban areas also keeping them as the uh, pet animals in their house, uh, because the maintenance cost of these uh, smallest breeds is very negligible, and thereby keeping them uh, being an auspicious uh, thing, they are preferring now in uh, urban areas, it is uh, taking up some of the dwarf uh, uh, cattle breeds are also keeping them as in pet uh, animals instead of for the economical purposes. So next please, <clears throat> few domestic animals, especially the uh, birds are also kept as pets. So every year, the first week of the May is being celebrated as the National Pet Week. So of which uh, the greater importance is given to dog in those in that period of the uh, month, wherein uh, several uh, uh, awareness programs and then some of the free treatment or the vaccinations or the deworming programs will be taken up by some of the animal welfare organizations. And thereby the pet uh, welfare is uh, upheld. Next please, ma'am. So being in that, what are all the pet animals which are there? The foremost comes the dog. So it is the most popular pet in India because of the easy availability and the significant loyalty which we have seen in so many occasions. So much uh, less widespread uh, pets which are there in the exotic species are like, as I told, snakes, turtles, inguinas. So many things are being coming up, but of which the cat is the, the dog is the foremost uh, pet animal. Next, please. So coming to that, uh, in uh, next is the cat, and that to the Persian cat is the most uh, preferred one. 
in uh, that too in the urban and semi urban areas they are uh, taking up uh, very largely and in any of and in each of the houses in the rural uh, area also a particular type of uh, non descriptive cattle uh, like non descriptive breed of a cat is usually maintained and they maintain such of those uh, household cats for uh, uh, the predation over the uh, rats so that the rat population can be kept controlled so in addition to this persian cat which is the uh, most uh, costliest breed uh, bengal cats are also one of the most uh, famous pets which are coming up in india in the urban areas next please ma'am so next coming to which breed in which uh, species is the rabbits so they are the most uh, and they have the life expectancy of up to 6 to 7 years also and uh, several uh, breeds are there and strains are there in the rabbit so usually the rabbits uh, rabbitry commercial rabbitry is also taking up in some of the uh, semi urban areas wherein uh, and uh, some of the uh, non vegetarian hotels uh, wherein especially they cook the meat of the rabbit in different uh, tastes and thereby commercial uh, rabbitry is also picking up but usually the rabbits are also kept as in uh, uh, for around 6 to 7 years uh, it could be there in that next please sir so in addition to this rabbit what are the other things are the guinea pigs so they look like a pig itself and that's why the term guinea pig is there and but guinea pigs it is they were very small so usually they are plant eaters and uh, since uh, these days uh, since the population is being in the apartment and the modern buildings without uh, lack of uh, sufficient space and uh, all and the dogs and cats uh, may not be uh, available for them to keep or the permission may not be given in the apartments and all so in that way so guinea pigs are taking up uh, in such of those apartment uh, households so they are very lightweight and easy pets and uh, they are uh, but they are very very delicate and uh, fearful creatures that that is very important uh, compared to all other pets animals and also they prefer cool environment and are easy to care and the next comes the parakeets Uh, so from parrots to parakeets usually what you feel see in some of the uh, pet shops uh, wherein the parrots will be sold out like that you will see but actually they are not the parrots they are the parakeets whatever we are seeing in uh, indian conditions they are all parakeets not truly the parrots so in addition to this some people also keep house sparrow mina para then eagles and kites so some people will uh, take these as an auspicious wherein they keep So in particular position in the house itself for keeping them in the terms of what we know that was to so in that way they are uh, taking up in our households also in addition to this uh, bachis and uh, akatus are also being attractive and uh, some of the um, commercial uh, uh, pet or bird uh, uh, customers are also there and also the vendors are also there where we can uh, get very good uh, animals from such of those uh, people even from the abroad countries also and uh, usually we advise to keep the birds any of the birds in pairs usually it is very advisable than keeping in uh, single or solitary bird next please so in addition to this the next comes the uh, gold fishes you might have seen all these in uh, Uh, most of the houses and in also in the uh, some offices and all so usually the gold fish is the one which is most uh, preferred in the home aquarium in addition to this uh, yellow tanks and then uh, fox face rabbit fishes means it's the name of their uh, fish uh, name then uh, popular uh, freshwater fishes are an angel fish and then koi carp and guppies these these are all uh, uh, commercially available and in pet shops they are uh, uh, available for us but whatever the importance in this uh, uh, aquarium set home is they need to continuously monitoring the salinity of the water and uh, there should be a larger water to fish proportion that is what important because some people when uh, beginning they take these uh, fishes with enthusiasm and after a couple of one week or 10 days uh, they will get uh, fed up with these uh, fishes the main reason is uh, their aquarium water tap may not be having a very large volume of water such that the proportion is very less and thereby fishes uh, dies out and also the water salinity matters a lot so in that way please uh, have a uh, very good enlarged one uh, aquarium with uh, uh, non saline water thereby you can uh, maintain the fishes uh, very easily compared to all other uh, pets next please 
In addition to this, the furthermore coming up are the hamsters. So these are the tiny rodents. Uh, they are short tail and unlike the other rodents uh, like rat or mice, these are also looking the same, but they have, have the short tails and legs are very slender and uh, ears are very short. They have, uh, measures about two to six inches and approximately they will be 6.2 ounces. So in that way, these are the most tiniest and we can keep in a, just in a, a dryer itself of any of the uh, desks or the tables. So they are also coming up in some of the urban areas, please. Next. So next is the turtles. So this being uh, taken or observed as an uh, auspicious and, uh, and if they kept, uh, keep the turtles, there will be a good thing in our house like that. It has been uh, uh, told so. So in that way, the turtles are also coming up in our uh, area. Next, please. So next is the mice. As I already told, uh, mice and rats are also picking up and uh, very little and uh, very delicate. So not pro appropriate pets for the young kids. So wherever the young anima, young uh, children are there in our houses, we usually sh uh, not advise uh, uh, the rats or mice uh, as the pets for them. So and further, the rats require the same care as that of the dogs. So next, please. Then comes the horses. Yes, uh, with the present condition in our society, the horses aspect is very less compared to these uh, European nations and uh, cold countries. But still, yes, the horses are also kept and the mules are also kept as uh, pets wherever the uh, richness is there with the people. Next, please. Uh, so now coming to dog. Uh, in particular, uh, these are the so far told uh, uh, species are the ones which are kept as the pets. So now coming to in detail about the talk, what we talk in detail in this session. So these are the first domesticated species uh, and also the first uh, pet species which are kept from, uh, from which are kept by the ancient ancestors. So indirect evidences are there even from the Paleolithic uh, age also, wherein we have identified. And then the paintings and carvings which have been done in the ancient tombs and all uh, uh, given the evidences that dogs were uh, there if, since from that uh, uh, Paleolithic case. And in Mesopotamian region, the dogs definitely uh, are being seen as uh, uh, present in the uh, mastiff or shin uh, participating in a lion hunt like that, the carvings are there. And domestic pets depicted in the sense of the family in ancient Egyptian papyrus also. It has been uh, found. Next, please. So in Indian uh, ancient cosmology, what the dogs are connected with is the planet Saturn. Please uh, be aware of this. And then uh, you know some that uh, Mahabharata, that Yudhishthira, whatever the king, Pandava king is there. He has been associated with a faithful dog and even that dog followed him even to the level of heaven. Uh, that, that all is there in our uh, mythological scripts. Next to the dog, the horses and cats are the animals uh, which are most intimately associated with the human beings. So, among these three species, the dogs are more intimated than ours, and then comes the cats. Please, next. So, these are the different uh, mannerisms. What we can tell are the body language, are the mood uh, elevations, are the mood characters of the uh, dogs. You know, so, this definitely, it's a very good uh, uh, idea where we can get uh, at what time I may be attacked by then uh, a dog whenever I have entered into an uh, new house wherein the dog has not seen me at all. So in that way, you can have a very good uh, uh, view of these uh, signals by the dogs. So in that way, what in totality I can tell is if a dog, a new dog, which has seen you, if the tail is been ele elevated up or erected up, and then if the dog is seeing you with the glared eyes and open mouth and the hind legs are stretched apart, that means it is trying to attack you. That's the only uh, symbol what we can gauge from an animal. If an animal is uh, tail is uh, bent downwards and it is shagging the tail and uh, it is seeing you with a very cordial way, with a not uh, glaring eyes and the mouth is not so open and it is uh, uh, seeing you with a friendly, then it, that the dog is not... Uh, uh, attacking you. That's the only thing what I can uh, in general tell you. But these are the different signals which gives you a very good uh, idea about uh, pet of your uh, uh, home whenever you are uh, keeping the dog as your pet. Next, please. 
So then uh, coming to the relationship of our pet with any of the wild animals, yes, our uh, behavioral and morphological and molecular uh, evidences have suggested that whatever the dogs which are having in us are slightly or uh, more uh, ancestors to the wolf, that is Canis ulpus. And our dog uh, scientific name is Canis familiaris. And the uh, oldest remain of the dog, whatever the found is, dates back to 12,000 to 14,000 years back. And American Kennel Club. So these are the organizations which causes uh, uh, or makes the classifications of the uh, dog breeds. So in that way, uh, the different breeds which are there in the dogs will be are grouped into seven different groups or seven types. Whatever the breeds are there in the entire in, uh, world are being grouped into uh, seven different types. So those are the one uh, that is sporting hounds working, area, toy, non-sporting, and herding dogs. So these are the seven different types in which different breeds will be placed. This classification is all based on certain of the characters. For example, sporting means these are the dogs which are fit for any of the sports. Hounds, these are the ones which are fit for jumping or uh, uh, running over the very long distances like that. And if that working means they are the ones which are very much fit for heavy muscular work. And terriers means very long years and uh, wherein they are very much sensitive for the any of the directions and all. Toy means they are the very smallest one. And non-sporting means they are not fit for any of the strenuous walk or jogging or running and all. Breeding means they are the ones which are kept for uh, uh, protection, like uh, sheep protection or any of the uh, cow protection and all. And, uh, and uh, we might have seen all these uh, uh, sheep uh, uh, herd people, whoever comes from uh, uh, this uh, Tumkur region and all, uh, till to the level of Kodogo and they will go back. So in doing so, along with their sheep flock, uh, they will accompany with the three or four dogs in each of the flocks. And the, the function of these dogs is to protect them from any of the other carnivores. So that's what the herding dogs. So in that way, most of the dogs in India are of the type of herding only, but uh, several other uh, breeds are also there in the herding group. Next, please. So coming to sporting uh, group, uh, especially includes spaniels and retrievers. Golden retriever, you might have uh, herd and Labrador retriever and all you might have heard. So they are kept uh, confined in the secured fence. This is very important because they are very much ferocious. They need to be kept always in the secured fence and enjoy the attention of well-behaved children and easy to train and care also. This, this uh, uh, breeds in this group, they are very much easy to train, especially. Next, please. Coming to the uh, hounds, there are two different types of the hounds groups are there. One is scent hounds and one more is sight hounds. Scent hounds are the one uh, which uh, are very much sensitive in uh, sensing the things, means uh, smelling the things and uh, uh, olfactory, olfactory systems are very much advanced. And sight hounds means wherein the vision capacity is very much in such of those ones. So sight hounds used in the chasing uh, sport and all it is being used. And uh, most common uh, scent hounds are uh, beagle and sight hounds um, among which the most common is greyhound and the uh, whippet like that, the Briggs and Saluki, all these are coming up in our uh, country. Coming to uh, St. Bernard, it is the most uh, Portuguese and then the water dog and then the Rottweiler, Boxer, Great Dane, all these comes under the one more group and wherein uh, it is very independent and difficult to manage these breeds especially. And they are not suitable for the owners which are coming out with the first time as the pets. So we won't advise these uh, uh, breeds for them. Usually we advise Thai breeds. So St. Bernard, it is the most heaviest uh, uh, dog breed among all the uh, breeds. So we won't advise usually. And Boxer also very ferocious being that. And then Rottweiler and Great Dane being very heavy and uh, heavily built. The much of the spaces and all repaired. So thereby we won't advise the first time dog owners. This, uh, these breeds we won't usually advise. And also these breeds being very heavy, they are very much prone for various uh, giant diseases and they need extra care in terms of uh, boom being or uh, broom, broom, bruising or uh, and all and exercises and all it matters a lot so thereby we avoid usually these groups for the young uh, first time uh, owners next please so then comes the terriers so these are the hunting dogs quite independent and difficult to train so special grooming not good for the road children these terriers please next. 
Hello. Next, please. Uh, Tile dogs are generally easy care pets, usually the Pomeranian, what we have seen, and uh, Sidzu, uh, what we see usually, and then they put them, uh, and then they are very good companion to the children and also to the women. So, except for in this type breeds, the uh, other breeds uh, don't like children usually, because we might have uh, seen so many uh, Pomeranian or the Poodle, which might have attacked the uh, children and all. But what to such of those? The problem is being uh, uh, the shorter uh, nasal passage, so the snoring sound will be there in the pug. So, thereby, owners won't prefer to keep the pug because of its nice during the night time. And grooming matters a lot in this uh, time, especially. Grooming means uh, combing the uh, hairs all over the body. That's the meaning of that. Next. So, of the non sporting, uh, the Dalmatian is the Anchocho, are the most uh, common uh, breeds which we see. Dalmatian is an active, independent, athletic dog that needs a firm hand, especially. So, why I have kept this uh, Dalmatian in particular is because it is the most common breed uh, which ever see in the metropolitan cities of Karnataka. So, thereby, Dalmatian needs uh, independent athletic uh, activities. So, and also we need to be more uh, compassionate or passionate with them with the love. Otherwise, uh, the vices means bad characters could be developed very easily in this uh, Dalmatian. Next, please. Next, uh, the German Shepherd, which is an one more uh, versatile working dog. Uh, and also similar to that is the broader coolie are also there. These herding dogs are more active and intelligent and uh, very much determined and courageous. But the problem with this uh, German Shepherd is being uh, very uh, long, uh, hairy. Uh, the skin problem will be very uh, common. And thereby every six to eight months and all, we need to keep on uh, giving some of the... Uh, Ointments or the antibiotics to these uh, dogs, and also in between the toes, some sore uh, toe common is very many common in these uh, uh, animals. And also, since the uh, feathers and since the skin area and all, we need to keep this animal in the uh, non wet region. So, usually, when we allow the animal to go into the lawn uh, or into the bushy area, they may uh, come across with the wetness of the water and they keep on. Uh, infecting the skin and all, then bad smell, foul smell will be there and all. So usually in that way, the German Shepherds, uh, mm, the people are uh, now going away with this breed because of all these uh, Then dogs of the Indian origin, uh, which have been identified by NBAGR, means it is an uh, institute under ICR, wherein it is called uh, National Bureau of Animal Genetic Resources. So earlier, uh, uh, most of the breeds which are seen in India are also uh, of the exotic only. But now, uh, few of the breeds of Indian origin are also recognized as they are the breeds because they are in no good number with uh, special characters in each of them, of which the Rampur round, then Gatti, Kutia, in uh, Rajapalyam of Tamil Nadu and Mudol of uh, Karnataka. Mudol is in hound, so it is very much, it has been even uh, inserted into the Indian army also in the about uh, three, four months back, wherein the Mudol hound is a well recognized breed of the uh, Karnataka. And uh, wherever we come across uh, some other uh, dogs in all across the uh, South India, uh, that uh, ro on the road or the besides the road, whatever the dogs we see, usually they are uh, non discriminatory, usually tell, but they are also with certain uh, characters among them. So, thereby, the NBGR has recognized such of those uh, country dogs, which we call usually in a layman language, they are also called as a breed by name Combi. So, these are the different breeds of the Indian origin. Coming to choosing a dog. So, if I want to have, you know, which dog should we have? So, it depends on size, shape, coat structure, and inherited ability. Means uh, whether I can afford a very big size animal or small, or the shape, whatever it should be, and then the coat, uh, whether the shell, the airy it shall be, or let it be non airy such that the maintenance is uh, very easy. And what should be the inherent ability, whether I should go for the very calm dog or uh, some uh, protecting dog like that. These are the different factors when we go for choosing a dog. Next, please. Coming to the size of the animal, 
So chain breeds, large breeds, and long-haired breeds we will uh, take into account. And then medium-sized dogs, and then small dogs, and very small Thai dogs. So in that way, we will uh, classify the things. But medium-sized dogs are the mostly suited uh, dogs for our, uh, most of the families because the home or the whatever the space available is most uh, uh, okay with these uh, medium-sized ducks. And there's plenty of choice with these uh, medium-sized ducks compared to large or the very small ties. And then small ducks, unsuitable as pets for uh, small children. And very small tie ducks are the one, uh, one or two adults who handle them carefully, should be there for these small ducks. Usually we, we think that uh, small and the small tie breeds are very easy to handle. It is not so actually because they need more uh, association with the humans than the medium-sized dogs. That usually the uh, ethology, that means uh, psychology of the animals, uh, the research in that area says these five things. And all coat touch will require some attention usually. Long-haired dogs tend to smell when they are uh, wet or damp. So in that way, maintenance costs uh, increases or the time uh, increases. And the poodles and the bedlingtons will require clipping and bathing every six to eight weeks. See. Uh, whereas the other breeds, uh, they need uh, uh, frequently. So what should be the bathing frequency and all, I will come to that in the later slides. And terriers need hand stripping twice a year. Hand stripping means that uh, nail clipping of the nails. Next, please. So if you, uh, if you want a dog as a permanent companion in your uh, uh, home, uh, the male is perhaps the more suitable uh, uh, animal than the female because unless there are a definite plan to control estrus in the beaches means uh, if we keep the female animal uh, once in six months the animal comes for the breeding so it is the character of the animal so during that breeding season uh, much of the uh, physical nuisance and psychological nuisances will be there for the owners so in that way uh, if you plan for any of the breeding of the female it is okay if you are not planning for any of the breeding then it will be a nuisance usually so in that way uh, the pets, the male pets, male animals will be preferred, male dogs will be preferred usually. And the two male dogs being uh, operated for removal of the uh, testicles and all such that they shouldn't breed like that. In that way, the people prefer the male dog and the two castrated male dog, the people will prefer. Please. Next. So coming to selection, oh yes, I have decided with much of the knowledge, uh, yes, I have this space, I have the people to look out and expenditure shall be like this. If you have plan, uh, what should next the person should do is, yes, we have to get the pups only. Though selection of pups matters a lot, where in the breed characters. If we come across with uh, so many breeders, yes, uh, they take us to the animal uh, wherein the young ones are there with the mother. So usually they tell that uh, this is the true breed and, uh, and they show the documents and all uh, the female mother and the father documents and all. Truly, when you take the pups, please uh, see into the uh, group of the pups or the photo of the uh, pups of a single mother such that among them the best animal should be taken by you people. That is what important. And then uh, type of the dog should be large, medium, or small, usually. The space availability, temperature of the neighbor, temperament of the neighbor, uh, even the temperature also, because uh, compound wall, if it is there or not, in between uh, houses and all, you should take into account all those things. Uh, we shall have the uh, question and answer session uh, at the end, please. Uh, I will definitely make the clear clearance of that, please, definitely. And usually you need to uh, take uh, the pups from a uh, registered uh, breeder itself. That is very important because uh, in the in that uh, business of the dog breeding, uh, much of the illegal activities are going on. So a breeder will be there with the registration and all. A one more person will be purchasing the animals from that breeder and that the middle person will be marketing you people for his gain. So in doing so, what you lack is uh, that uh, legal document from the original owner will not be given to you. So in that way, whenever you come across in future for any of the shows or the dog shows which you go, uh, wherein you have to show the documents of the parent linkage. So in that way, try to get the uh, animals or the pups, especially from the true breeders itself. Usually we take the uh, advisor to take the pups at the age of four to six weeks. Uh, after the birth and some people will uh, sell in, in uh, at the age of four, uh, three weeks or four weeks itself but it is usually not advised because uh, till the age of uh, five to six weeks 
the young ones needs the assistance from the mother that uh, milk uh, feeding then for stomach intake and then all should go in a phase wise manner if we have taken out uh, uh, young one will become orphan and uh, raising those uh, young one without the very good development of the neuromuscular or the sensors and all it will be very difficult for us so my advice is try to take the pups from the true breeder uh, at the age of around uh, five to six weeks while uh, purchasing those uh, uh, pups you need to go to the uh, in situ of the other with the pup and such that the young one are the pup with uh, very much uh, uh, active and then very much alert to and then uh, which is of good condition should be purchased by you people that is what i am telling so a healthy pup is the one which will be fatty enough with the right height and should not be pot belly this is very very important one thinks that if the stomach is uh, pot is uh, belly like are very much uh, uh, filled enough then that pup is very good like that so the people will think but it is not so please remember because the pup should be fat but not uh, Pot belly and then with the bright eyes it should be and uh, you can watch the litter means group of the pups uh, from an individual pup uh, behavior you can watch and a very boldest and the loveliest pup should be selected by you people instead of uh, taking uh, a single uh, what are the uh, one uh, that uh, middleman will tell yes sir this is the what a very good pup among all like that you shouldn't believe in them you should physically examine and then take the animal they should. and the pup should have loose and the pliable skin and the glossy coat it should, it's very necessary and then give maximum consideration to the breed conformation at the young animal itself next please and uh, bright and clear eyes pups average uh, in body weight they, they they should be average in body weight then congenital deformities yes, you should uh, uh, look into them then gum should be pink in color and paleness of the gum indicates poor condition especially the eyes including the iris should be of the same color and shape and size this everyone please look into this this iris what are the uh, middle of the uh, eye is there it should be of same color in both the eyes and should be same shape and size otherwise in future some of the uh, eye problems could be there so in that way please try to avoid and ear should ha not have any discharge of the foul smell and try to examine all the four limbs and then count even the digits also such that they are equal in number and uh, any presence of the beads at the region where the rib join with the sternum so in the thoracic region will be a suggest suggestive of the rickets which is an uh, calcium deficiency condition so physically examine the animal take your time look into all these characters and then purchase the pup next please so these are the breeding uh, guide to the uh, dog that means at what age the animal the young one which have been brought by us will come for the breeding it ranges from 6 to 12 months especially the uh, large breeds at the medium sized breeds will come for uh, around 7 uh, months or 8 months itself and tall breeds will take little bit longer time for the age at puberty then age at breeding at what age we should breed the animal immediately if an animal comes for the breeding by means uh, puberty by 9 months we shouldn't go for the breeding in the next month itself please avoid that at least one 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 year or 15 months or 12 to 15 months shall be there uh, the age of the animal such that at that time the mating or the breeding shall be allowed and the gestation period is uh, 63 days this is very important and the age of weaning means separation of the young one from the mother uh, should be at the uh, age of 4 to 6 weeks it is very important and then a, a, a dog can uh, live up to the age of uh, 15 years it ranges from 10 to 15 and records are there till to the level of uh, 32 years also and you might have seen a film of chico So wherein uh, it was uh, waiting for his owner, even though the owner was dead. So in another um, film, uh, the railway station is uh, named after the dog, and a statue of the dog is there. So and in Canada also, uh, in movie on uh, lab dog was there in uh, Canada, which you have seen uh, Nanu Matto Pando, maybe the name. Uh, try to see those uh, films; they are very good. Please. next please nanu mattu gunda the kannada film name nanu mattu gunda uh, a labrador uh, affection with the auto driver is there in that then uh, yes we have brought in a very good pup and it has reached the uh, puberty age so how to know how the animal has reached the puberty if it is female yes the animal try the animal try to show e stress 
So whenever the animal is in estrus, so what is that is? It is in a period wherein the female animal will be uh, ready for the breeding with the male. So it is usually accompanied with uh, uh, swelling of the vulval region, then uh, bloody discharge from the vulva and uh, will be noticed for around uh, 7 to 10 days. So during that period, the uh, activity nuisance will be there with the arrival of the other dogs along nearby our uh, female animal. So this being uh, the period, uh, the female will not allow the, any of the male to breed. So after this 8 to 10 days, whatever the next uh, 7 to 10 days is there, is the actual breeding period. And if you plan for any of the pregnancy in a, in a female pet, which we have kept, it should go for every uh, two days or three days once for around two to three times uh, breeding with the uh, true male breed, such that a very good uh, true breed uh, pups are available with our female pet. So in that way, Whatever I am telling is uh, female pet which has been kept by us, if it is uh, still showing the bloody discharge in the vulval region, shouldn't go for any of the breeding. Wait for the time period of around 7 to 10 days. Once the bleeding stops, wait for one more, uh, one or uh, one and a half day, then take it into the male, uh, counter male, uh, true breed male, such that it is breed a mating process goes on and every two days once says or three days once you try to make sure that three times the animal is uh, bred or the mating process is uh, went on like that you plan such that a good number of young pups uh, are available by the end of the pregnancy that is 60 to 63 days next please So a bitch in it uh, is a public nuisance, undesirable at home and unwelcomed uh, even the, in any of the places. So this continues for 8 to 10 days and in sometimes a little bit uh, longer also. The above stage is follow followed by, means after this uh, discharge, the next 7 to 10 days, what I have told during the uh, mating season, pinkish and watery discharge will be there in the vulval region, no problem at all with that. Then that 7 to 10 days, you plan for... Uh, um, some of the breeding activities and it is advisable to breed dogs after one year. Means uh, once you have done breeding and the pup is available with you, uh, then the uh, another six weeks the pups are uh, with the mother itself. And then uh, once again, after six months, if the animal comes for the breeding, you don't go for the breeding again. Usually once in a year, we are advised the female dogs to breed. Please, next. So mating management means whether the female animal should be taken to the male for breeding or male should be allowed with the uh, female home. That is the question what I am posing here. So re restrained uh, uh, till she is ready for mating evident from her posture means after that uh, 10 days of the uh, bloody discharge, usually the female will be ready for the uh, mating and the uh, activities or the behavior will be uh, very much uh, accommodative for the mating by the male. So that is the period we should think of. And usually mating place one or two days after the discharge of the blood is stopped. And uh, vaginal cytology means the, these are the procedures uh, wherein the veterinarian could be approached wherein they will do some uh, uh, cytological examination by fleshing out some of the uh, cells so by means of a cotton swab, we will try to take out the cells and then we try end up the microscope and we will take the exact uh, timing such that you can uh, go for a very good uh, breeding with the male because each time breeding with the elite uh, male costs matters. So they have huge amount. So in that way, a particular timing is very good and that can be detected by vaginal uh, cytology with a very expertise. So, and always uh, try to note down the records, means uh, when the animal was bred first time, then the second time, the, that recording of the things is very important. Then the bitch is usually brought to the male for breeding. This is very important because a male shouldn't be brought to the female home. Instead, a female animal, which is uh, now in the heat period, after that uh, seven to 10 days of the maternal discharge, which is now in the 13th day or the 12th day, and we should take that animal to the uh, male where it is rather than bringing in opposite way and uh, we should allow or give the time for the uh, newly uh, arrived male and female to have courtly behavior uh, before going for the actual mating so and this can be these two animals can be kept in a very calm environment and uh, keeping away from the human activities and all uh, we can manage uh, very easily and uh, we can avoid uh, aggression also in that way please next 
Next, the enlargement of the bulbous gland is means whenever the male uh, mounts over the female, uh, since the uh, process of mating is quite different than uh, that of the other animals or the species. In case of dogs, uh, there will be congestion or the stagnation or the stasis of the blood in the bulbous gland. This is a part of the uh, pinnae structure, take it like that way. So in that way, whenever the blood is uh, stacked in that and uh, enlarged uh, gland is that, prevents the withdrawal of that penile structure from the female vagina. So in that way, the vagina, uh, that uh, mating time will occur, means the animals can't separate out. So we shouldn't make any of the nuisances during that time because some of the people will try to uh, chase away them uh, in the roadside, uh, whenever the, you see in the roadside dogs. So shouldn't do actually. So it takes uh, five to 60 minutes, means five minutes to one hour. To release, and the uh, release of the day occurs only when that uh, uh, stagnated blood in the bulbous gland is gets away through the circulation. So it is a natural process. So give the time for your uh, female pet such that uh, you have enough of time when you go for the uh, female dog for the mating. The female and male should be allowed to separate naturally. That is what important. What I am telling. Once the bulbous gland is reduces, the size sufficient, the egg will open up. Next, please. So pregnancy, yes, we have bred our animal, uh, now my female pet is back to home. Uh, how can I confirm the animal is pregnant? That is what important because the clinical signs of the pregnancy appears by around 25 to 30 days after the mating. This is, uh, we can't detect earlier to this. Uh, means minimum of one month around is very important. The common signs are uh, the animal tries to have less food and nastia could be there, vomiting and all tendency and uh, appetite will be less. So after five weeks, so post mating, significant increase in the appetite increases. So this is very important because if the animal is pregnant, means some of the uh, new proteins in the whichever are there in the uh, young ones are the conceptors concept will be making the animal to go for less of appetite or the nausea and all. So once the pregnancy is completely established, uh, there will be increase in the appetite or the intake of the food such that the young ones are nourished well. That is the motto of this one. So before, uh, difficult to diagnose the pregnancy between 30 to 45 days due to the amniotic fluid. Means uh, with ultrasonography, uh, we are now with much advanced technologies, we are uh, very much able to detect by around uh, 25 days itself, but usually by palpation, the, it's very tough. And uh, instead of radiography, try to have uh, ultrasound uh, scanning uh, for your uh, female pet for the confirmation of pregnancy and the number of conceptions in that. And then palpation uh, could be uh, used uh, after this 45, 50 days and all, how many uh, yeah, what's the growth rate and all we can detect by palpation. But usually ultrasound is advised such that we can detect the pregnancy at the earliest. Yes. Don't go for radiography, usually we advise. Next. Next, please. So pregnant bitch, yes, I have confirmed my animal is uh, pregnant. Then what to do? Yes, we have to wait uh, up to 63 days from the date of uh, mating. First month of pregnancy, usually normal maintenance diet is enough. Then uh, from second month and onwards, we should give extra one gram per kg body weight. If my dog is 25 kg, yes, we have to give more of uh, 25 grams additional diet to that of the normal diet which is being given. Then what is normal diet? What is, we are giving is, yes, I will come to that. Then uh, in addition to this uh, supplementation of the minerals and vitamins, we could give. And then uh, immunization for uh, certain of the diseases, especially canine distemper and uh, canine hepatitis. During the mid gestation is very important. Because this uh, gives rise to the uh, passive immunity such that the young ones are having the antibodies for these diseases. So uh, during the mid gestation, it is advised to immunize the mother itself such that an immunity of uh, six to nine weeks is there in the uh, next uh, whenever it has uh, delivered. So deworming with uh, suitable drugs at mid gestation, again, it is advisable. And also before vaccination, uh, at least one week prior to vaccination, the animal should be dewormed. Means if for the presence of any of the ectoparasites or endoparasites, which could be there in the uh, intestinal tract. So deworming is advisable in mid gestation. Next place. Based on body weight. So care during whelping, yes, my animal has uh, reached to 60 to 63 days. Now it is showing a little bit of uh, uh, signs of delivery. So in dogs, it is called whelping. So temperament just uh, definitely changes before whelping. So it becomes very much curious and very much aggressive. 
solitary it becomes and valva usually swells up and it seeks a safe and calm space and all for its work the mammary glands become very much turgid and the milk will be exuding squeezing the treats upon and then uterine contraction starts with the first stage and uh, whenever the uterine contraction starts the female behaves abnormally so please be careful in those period and due to pain it shows the such of those and then it refuses to eat or drink and all then it will lay flat on one side means uh, after a span of one, one, one and a half hour or two hour it will flat on one side and will strain heavily and the discharge will be greenish in color so at that point then uh, now, um, stage by stage the number of pups uh, will keep on coming out and even uh, the total period of whelping could last for uh, one to one and a half day so please be aware such that uh, whelping is given enough of time such that all the pups which are there from the uh, womb comes out so when the stage of labor begins leave it or self in a solitary and space don't make any of the new sensors with them next please so after the littering are one or two pups the bitch uh, requires uh, means it becomes silent in, in the pup may be having uh, number of pups could be around eight like that in the womb but uh, all the eight will not come uh, one after the other means it takes little bit of time twice in time are the interval times in between the delivery of one and two like that so one and two pups means first two pups have come and then the animal becomes quiescent and when again starts training and later again one or two pups and then pause again and then again it gives on like this the process goes on so littering may be completed within 18 hours and at times prolonged still further also up to one one and a half day it may go on usually the card uh, may be means one after the other whenever the young one and uh, try to ligate that if the mother allows if she doesn't allow don't worry uh, then uh, passing of the after that uh, placenta whatever is there will be occurring one after the other means once the pup has come out the placenta of come out so some of the uh, mothers will try to eat that uh, uh, placenta but it is not advisable and uh, most of them will not eat but some may eat but it will end up in uh, some as to disturbances So it's not not uh, so important. And then whenever uh, the pups are there, try to give good uh, um, cotton or very good warm clothes, such that uh, the young ones are uh, very warm enough because they are uh, still yet to mature enough in terms of uh, opening the eyes and then in terms of becoming uh, thermo tolerant like that. There's some still few more physiological capacities or mechanisms should be still developed in such of those young pups. So thereby we should keep them in the in warm spaces so then after littering uh, means uh, delivery the bitch may be given drinking uh, milk or uh, may refuse solid food that's why we usually give advice liquid diets during one or two days after the delivery and uh, avoid strangers going nearby the pups or the mother uh, initially the two initial uh, three or four days like that uh, shouldn't allow any of the young one or other uh, things unknown people never permit any stranger to touch the Pups. Next, please. So, assistance required in helping. What we can do at our best is uh, when the gestation is prolonged and which appears to lie exhausted. Means, uh, 60 to 63 days are over. Still, the animal is not showing any of the signs of uh, delivery and all. Then we should uh, think of uh, meeting with the veterinarian and uh, taking any of the advice and all. Then, uh, which straining severely for one or two hours and greenish discharge as still not at. Uh, notice it then we should go for uh, advice of the veterinarian that we, and then meanwhile uh, during the process of helping if the animal has become completely exhausted and the abdomen is distended and fetal heartbeat is not audible then we should uh, seek the veterinarian then as utra is dilated and which is not straining if the that valval region what you see is dilated and the animal is just lying so in that way also Uh, it has exhausted just the meaning of that because some of the metabolic diseases are also there in the postpartum conditions and the postpartum uh, disease conditions are there so those may come in the way of helping so in that conditions in those conditions we need to seek the uh, assistance next please pseudo pregnancy means it is a common uh, uh, 
abnormal condition in the ducts wherein after the estrus period uh, even though we have not uh, mated uh, allowed for mating or breeding with the male the still the female may show the signs of pregnancy that's why we call this as a pseudo pregnancy wherein characterized by enlarged uh, mammary gland and secretions of little bit uh, milky like uh, things from the other also so which shows all signs of pregnancy and uh, impending parturition or signs also it may show but no pups will be there because breeding was not allowed so they become but such of those uh, conditions this is a physiological condition because of persistence of uh, uh, corpus luteum means a structure which is there in the ovary which produces the progesterone and which is responsible for pregnancy and all so in that way this is not an uh, a uh, so serious condition because the same animal if we breed the next time when it comes for the estrus definitely it goes for a very normal pregnancy and good number of young ones can be obtained by us so pseudo pregnancy is uh, referring to that particular period or that's all so next time yes definitely we will get very good uh, uh, young ones if we uh, breed the animal next please so then care of pup yes young ones have brought out uh, now what to do for them because uh, they open their eyes by second week means at least 14 15 days are required so we should give them very good uh, neat uh, flooring such that the cage and room is uh, smooth enough uh, if we give much of the smooth and uh, floor then whenever they try to open the eyes and then they try to uh, get up and walk Uh, some problems could be there that's why for the young pups we, we advise them to give the rough uh, surface or the ground so that they can uh, walk very easily that's why we advise them to keep an uh, carpet so instead of uh, plain floor or like that then supplementation of uh, various vitamins and then minerals could be given for them uh, prior to weaning then uh, litter size if it is large feed with the feeding bottle because uh, uh, the mother may not be able to in the milk for all the pups so in that way and pups with full stomach uh, will not cry at night if the pups are crying at night means yes the food is not uh, sufficient by the mother we need to give the feeding bottle yes so newborn should spend the majority of their time uh, sleeping it is very important and when they are awakened they should be uh, nursing means feeding the mother so just they want to do is they sleeping or nursing sleeping or nursing so to do so what we should do is we should keep them away from the uh, noisy area and uh, light whatever we provide should be uh, smooth and light not the dark lights and all bright lights and all we shouldn't give then they do not like quietly and uh, still when sleeping also they will be uh, activated for most of the 75% of their uh, sleeping hours means they will be turning over and they will be moving their head and all like that no need to bother for those things and uh, muzzle twitching could be occurring or jerking and stretching and shifting the positions all these are common in the young ones they should be doing so when we go for uh, purchasing the animal uh, not for the first time itself you purchase the animal you try to visit the uh, site of purchase now uh, is for two times such that during first time you have gone there and you have observed for around 5 to 10 minutes ha huh, yes this this dog is uh, pup is uh, good and it is showing all the signs and it is active and very much uh, good enough in its body weight and all such that we, the second time when we go there we should observe the uh, young ones and we should purchase the best among them so activity sleep is important uh, for the young ones because uh, neuromuscular development takes place and mechanism by which new develops is by muscle tone and being to develop coordination and double the typical very good pup is the one which give which doubles their body weight by 7 to 10 days this is very important and uh, pups should uh, gain regular and the normal weight gain for uh, each week and uh, puppies typically are weaned at 6 to 8 weeks what i have already told next please so feeding what should be done no hard and fast uh, rule is there for feeding the young one or the adults also for uh, food materials obtained in the house rather than preparing the special food for dogs is advisable now so many companies are there with uh, different trade names yeah, but uh, may be costly those things if you are uh, affordable give him, give them no problem at all but preparing the things at the home is very good so after weaning once the young ones are out from the mother without any mother milk a combination of this this cow's milk of around 250 then water into it is 125 and then egg yolk 
and then glucose half uh, teaspoon could be fed to the young ones at intervals this is the best alternative to the young ones whenever they are weaned from the mother so for two to three days after weaning the pups will be crying it is a usual thing maybe because of separation anxiety and with the impression that the pup is crying uh, due to hunger never overload them uh, that's what we will do so when we bring the animal uh, means pup at uh, six to eight weeks after the weaning uh, uh, we keep on loading the things uh, Actually, the sufficient amount is given, but still then also it will be making the noise and all. And we give milk, biscuits, and uh, it results in indigestion. So further craze because of indigestion, what we have done because of overloading. So try to uh, give this uh, whatever the weaned uh, uh, milk, whatever the composition I am given. So try to give in uh, required quantity. How much is required? Yes, in the next slides it is there. Try to give such much. No, don't get into fear of uh, uh, crying and all. So feeding schedule uh, up to six months, one, uh, up to two months, one to two months, wherein the separation weaning is there. Six times a day we should keep uh, feeding, but uh, five to seven months onwards, uh, two times, and after seven months, it is uh, only one time a day, one meal a day is very enough for our uh, dogs. Then rusk, fresh bread, then good quality dog biscuits, eggs, so, soap, then porridge of either the wheat or oats or ragi can be given in early puppyhood and also in adults also. And uh, changing over the dietary uh, should be uh, very slow and steady. And by third month, yes, whatever the food will be given in its entire life should be uh, made proof such that by third month or uh, uh, by third uh, month of age, the animal is given or it is suited for the uh, diet which is will be there throughout the life. So start feeding meat if possible without much fat by the second month onwards itself to the pup. And feeding race is uh, in early puppy would uh, give spot bellied appearance. So try to avoid uh, uh, rice feeding in the early age and hence uh, uh, commence the feeding race after the three months of age. Next please. So main meal sometimes uh, should be given in the afternoon than during the night times and all because the uh, dogs have the tendency to go sleep after the heavy meal. So try to give in the mid-afternoon itself rather than the night time. Then uh, cooking and warming the food after chopping it into the smaller bits makes it very palatable. And the feed should contain or the food should contain 30% meat and the remaining cereals, vegetables and all. And even the meat if you are not giving then uh, vegetables, all these things, uh, carrot, beetroot could be added in the dog's diet and all. And chicken and fish may be fed and uh, bones could be removed whenever you are giving. For rearing a dog as a vegetarian uh, dog, you can give vegetable soups or the soya bean meal, chapati, idli. Yes, these things can be given, no need to worry. And meanwhile, you can give supplement with them with the minerals and vitamins for the required for the optimum weight gain. Please. So, feed requirement. Yes, if the body weight is 2.5, uh, 30 percent uh, containing dry matter means 0.3 kg should be given in that 30 percent will be the uh, dry matter. Means dry matter means uh, solid content without the water. 70 percent is water and 30 percent is the uh, dry matter content. So, a dog weighing 2.5 kg should be given every day 0.3 kg of the total food. Therein, 70 percent is water and 30 percent is the Matter. So, this uh, uh, formula holds good for any of the breed. Next, please. Then, uh, what is the requirement of protein, carbohydrate, fat, and all? Because we know in our terms for the human beings, uh, this should be the protein intake, like that. For example, uh, one gram per kg we advise for uh, uh, humans. So, but in case of tax, uh, uh, we advise 3.7 gram per kg body weight per day we should give. So this is what the protein content we should give. Likewise, the carbohydrate and fat and are all there for the adult one and also for the growing animals. Next, please. So nutritional management of the newborn puppies means uh, we should give enough of the colostrum feeding. 
but when we go for the purchase of the weaned uh, pups, it is not advisable. But make sure that enough of the colostrum is given such that the passive antibody is given and the immunity is there. And then uh, dog milk, whether the if it is not available uh, when we purchase the weaned, yes, the alternative to the dog milk we can make in our own. And then solid fit, what we give uh, from the month of three or four months of age, uh, that should be stabilized. So three to four weeks of age, we should uh, supplement the food with the solid. Then coarse milk should not be used to make the gruel. This is very important. Gruel, you know, we shouldn't use coarse milk because it is higher in lactose than the dog or the cat milk and may cause the area. So this way we shouldn't use puppies and uh, cat young ones uh, uh, should also not to be fed with homemade uh, weaning formula. Uh, so many people will advise this, uh, this formula can be given for the weaned one like that, but it is not so. Whatever I have given is the best option which you can have. The, and in uh, semi-solid food, they should be provided in the shallow dish. This is very important because puppies can be allowed to assess fresh food several times per day. Because uh, in the last chart, what I have shown, uh, eight times, ten times we go for feeding. So if we keep a very big uh, dish, uh, uh, spillage and all, uh, then uh, uh, some... Uh, adulteration or some uh, uh, infection could occur. So keep it in the shallow dishes itself. The bowl should be removed every 20 to 30 minutes. Next please. By 56 week of age, uh, they will be able to chew and consume the dry food. So by that age, you try to give the hard food also like chapati or uh, uh, boneless uh, meat and all. So complete weaning uh, should not be instituted until the uh, age of seven to eight weeks of age. Next please. Guidelines to be followed when uh, exercising the dog. This is very important because we are keeping all of us, most of the young ones, but how much exercise should be given in matters a lot. So should not be exercised very heavily, they shouldn't be exercised. The indication of heavy exercise is when you try to drag, drag the animal, it will not be moving it, and it will be heavily, uh, okay. Time is running out, I will go with the things. What I can tell is make the animal walk uh, as per its uh, requirement. Don't make it very uh, heavy exercise such that it is excessive sweating shouldn't be seen. If it is sweating, okay, excessive sweating it is showing means try to avoid the exercises. Next please. So training, yes, we need to give at least five commands. That is heal, sit, down, stay and come. These uh, things should be trained for any of the dog in your house. Untrained dogs will be nuisance. So try to uh, teach these five commands. Next, please. So the owner's voice, yes, uh, in, in that the pup should be at least uh, commandable by any one of the person in the home, at least with the good dog, good girl or the good boy like this. It should be recognizable to the pup, wherein the voice itself should show whether uh, the dog is uh, has done the perfect work or a wrong thing. So in that way, you should train. Next, please. So for house training and paper training, two types are there because uh, defecation, uh, we should train them. Wherein the house training means uh, after a good meal, we will take out the animal to the outside and uh, to a particular place and wherein it will urinate and defecate and we will uh, take back the animal. If we do these things for quite a number of days, then the animal will train for uh, house training, means outside the home. Whereas the, that is not advisable in the uh, localities or the apartments. So what we can do is paper training we can do. Uh, now parts are also available, defecating uh, parts are also available in the Amazon and all. In this, what we do is, we will after then a good meal we will make the animal to stay over a very large uh, uh, newspaper area wherein we will spread out the newspaper over the ground and we will make the animal to stand there itself till it defecate so once it defecated we will take out the animal to the other side and we will take out that uh, newspaper and throw away so meanwhile if we do like this for the number of days it will uh, be tuned as that i should defecate only this over the newspaper like that we can make the animal to paper training training next please so vaccination, at least six to eight weeks, uh, first vaccination for uh, canine parvovirus and then uh, canine distemper and all should be given. For anti-rabies, at least uh, 12 weeks should be over, by that we can give. And then uh, second uh, vaccination or the booster dose will be after 21 days and then once in a year we should give. Next. Deworming, every two weeks from birth to three months of age, uh, we should give. And then uh, every three uh, months from three to six months. And then every three months from six months onwards, we should keep on giving. Next, please. 
So brushing and grooming should be it's a very common like that uh, how we comb every day the hairs we should uh, do the grooming and brushing of the uh, animals also keeping the animal in a standby area so we will uh, comb the things and make sure that the dead hairs and the skins are dead skin layer and all will come out and the animal is uh, fresh and like that so uh, with the grooming and brushing the animal feels relaxed next please bathing need not to do every day bathing so shampoos are the dog soaps are available now so bathing is a very strenuous for the animal it won't uh, gives pleasure to it actually we may get pleasure but it won't give to them so mild soap should be used at least uh, fresh frequent bathing removes natural oils and thereby releases to results to the skin infection so try to avoid regular bathing instead once in uh, uh, week yes, it is advisable to go for the bathing are once in 10 days next please the ears and all should be observed by us so at least once in a month uh, if anything is there we should clean out with any alcohol and all and next place only a, part, a visible part should be cleaned and eyes also we should keep on seeing that too when we take out the animal to the outside and came back so try to see and serious irritation if it is there try to attend the uh, veterinarian immediately next next Dental care, yes, uh, it's very important. Like our uh, tooth uh, brushing, uh, we should do every day or at least uh, uh, twice a week. Uh, it is advisable. Once or twice a week, uh, not every day. Once or twice a week, we should uh, do this uh, brushing with the small toothbrush or the gas pad. We should uh, make the dental uh, cleaning. Uh, thereby, the uh, bad smell of, uh, because of dental tartar or uh, things can be avoided. Next. Bedding, yes, uh, a very good uh, soft bedding may not be needed. A clean and dry wooden plank is enough, but uh, in sometimes some bed sheets of uh, very small thickness could be avoided. And newspapers for bedding can be given for uh, uh, pregnant whenever it is uh, delivering the things. Next, so dampness should be avoided always. Next, next. Nail cutting, yes, uh, similar to us, uh, nail cutting, we should do the uh, cutting of the nails in the dogs also. So, we'll be trimmed occasionally using the clippers we should do. Don't use the uh, nail cutters which we use. And one should check the dew class, means uh, in one more figure which is behind the uh, other four uh, fingers, yes, there also the nails are there, that should be taken care of because that may result in uh, very elongation and uh, uh, make the problem to the animal. So, please be aware of that one. Next. Next, cat, yes, uh, uh, no need to go. I, it is the old uh, archaeological evidence says that it is around 9,000 9, years ago it was uh, uh, domesticated and litter size will be around 3 to 6 each time it will give birth. And the uh, mature weight will be around 2.5 kg and the duration of stress is 3 to 6 days instead of uh, 7 to 10 days as that of uh, dogs. And 63 days is the gestation period. Next, please. And usually the cat mating, you now it is taking up uh, with uh, across the different owners, uh, but usually it's not so successful. And the kittens are best purchased at uh, 8 to 12 weeks of age. And one should uh, select a kitten which is playful like that of the dog also. And uh, 7 weeks to limit unwanted reproduction, yes, that should be sterilized if you don't want uh, any of the young ones. And uh, next please. In the two to three months, if it is four meals per day, and six to eight months, two meals per day, adult two meals is enough. And fish and uh, uh, especially the fish availability should be there for the kitten because they lack so much of uh, other types of vitamins. They can't, uh, they, are, they are very much necessary for them. That's why fish should be available for them. Next. So this is the language of the cat, uh, wherein you can uh, see into this whenever you are uh, leisure enough, what is the playful area, then attend to playful mind, attend to mind, or the uh, predatory mind like that, you can have a look of these things. Please, next. Then owning a pet, uh, it's a responsibility, definitely. Next. Uh, please uh, try to have, don't make any impulse decisions because my neighbor has brought, I should bring like that. Don't make, think of all the uh, angles like amount, or the which breed, then space availability, nearby and the companionship, how many are there like that. Please look into that next, please. Then uh, ask the question, so why do you want a pet? Is there anyone who is uh, well enough or do you have enough time for the pet? It is very important. Next, please keep going. Then can you afford a pet and then do you have enough space like that? Next, please. So are pets allowed uh, where you live? Who will uh, watch your pet when you can't? You may you may go from morning to till evening to the working. So who will be there in that time? Next, please. All matters. So uh, whether the pet need from me, what, what I can take care of its needs, if I am okay with that. 
then what is the right pet for you? Yes, whether these are the things of which uh, yes, fishes can be easily maintained and uh, dogs, okay, that too, uh, no various uh, breeds uh, are available uh, as per your convenience. Yes, this is very important because uh, so many apartments may not allow and uh, leashing the things is very important in some of the areas next. Always try to put the leash uh, around the shoulder, not for the neck alone. And uh, training the pet matters a lot. Yes, you can train uh, by looking for so many uh, YouTube videos. Yes, you can uh, train on your own pet or commercially training uh, ventures are also there. Next, please. So, uh, should I do spaying or neutralizing or castrating the pet matters a lot? If you want to have uh, castration, yes, at particular age, we need to do that. Next, please. Then provide your pet needs, means can I work with the walking, then food availability, matters, expenses, all those things matters next. So keeping in mind all these, uh, and veterinary care and all, keeping in mind, please uh, uh, think of and uh, decide the pet which you want. So, and the interesting facts about the last thing is uh, uh, a pet, next previous slide please, a pet uh, that to a dog, uh, a cat can jump seven times my its height and then 40 times, uh, uh, smell is 40 times more strong in dogs than in people, means 40 times though the concentration can be detected, cats have rough tongues from birth, please remember this is, the cats have 32 muscles in each year, many hamsters can blink one at a time, just for your curiosity of pet, so any questions please uh, uh, put in the chat boxes, uh, what I try to say, uh, tell is, uh, uh, is it necessary to get the male dog sterilized and is it good for their health? Yes, uh, it is always advisable to keep uh, male dog uh, castrated if you are not planning for uh, breeding it. And that too, castrating definitely uh, decreases the testosterone level, thereby their aggressiveness could be reduced. But the contrary to that, uh, castration results in little bit of uh, weight gain. So thereby, what you have to do is, if you are not planned for any breeding, try to cast the castrated uh, castrate the animal by means of surgical operations and all, and then try to balance the feeding such that the overweight is not attained. That is the crucial thing. Then time running. Oh, sorry. If any other thing is there, please uh, let me know. Thanks for giving the opportunity for the organizers. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, if any questions, uh, notice is it. Thank you for asking questions. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Okay. Sir, uh, uh, thank you very much for yes, uh, uh, your time and your knowledge. We are very thankful. Uh, thank you all the participants for uh, today's session, attending today's session. Thank you one and all. We are ending. Thank you.